yes, first time I met Carlos Sr. was at the uh, first cigar uh, foundation dinner that I went to. And um, I immediately had a uh, kinship with him. Um, he represented uh, the best of his and my generation. Uh, people who started with very little but created a dynasty in the case of uh, Carlos. Hard work, um, there wasn't any job that he wouldn't do to create value for his company and for his family. And that kind of tradition um, that um, was part of that generation um, was something very special. And he represented the best of, of that. They, they did an event, the Grand Havana in Beverly Hills here, and I was one of the actually charter founding members. And I remember the Fuentes had an event there. And I, and I remember them specifically that the, the senior was there. And it was the first time I met him, and of course, it was like meeting royalty. If you're a cigar smoker, you meet, uh, you know, Carlos Sr. It doesn't get much better than that in the cigar world. I had gone to the Dominican Republic to do a pre-shoot of a movie that we ended up shooting there at, at the Bonao farm. We shot part of the, the pre-shoot there before the harvest of the wrapper that he uses for the Opus X. And so I met uh, Carlos there during the time. And of course, you know, you immediately saw where the warm-hearted nature and, and brotherly affection that you receive from Carlitos, you know immediately where that comes from. He used to come visit the set when we were shooting. Now, properly, we're shooting the movie, The Lost City. And, uh, and he would come to the set occasionally, and he would bring me a stack of a roll of, of Don Carlos. But it didn't have a box or anything. It was just wrapped. And uh, I'm not even sure it even had labels. He just said, he would just look at me, and he would go, forget about those other things. This is my blend. This is my blend. <laughs> so he, he's one of those guys when he tells you something, you can really count on it. You know, you don't walk away and wondering he, whether he really meant it or he's gonna follow through. If he tells you something, you know you got his words. Uh, a man who understood where he wanted to go with his company and, and surrounded himself with people who understood what he was attempting to accomplish. He created a dynasty is what he did and uh, the legacy will live on for a long time. We slept, ate, dream, play, work, nothing but tobacco. And uh, I mean, we had a lot of uh, bad times, and, uh, but we just overcome it. We overcome it. We just look further out, further out, and keep on trying. There was always, there was a kind of a humbleness about him, actually. So I, in a way, I felt that's that's that dichotomy of the man who, who is a giant in industry and understands business in that world and the, the white collar world of business. But yet, on the other hand, has never forgotten what it's like to just be a farmer and a grower and a guy who works with the land and the earth. And so he was the combination of those two things. If you come from a place that you have no fear to go back to, you can accomplish a lot. Carlos, myself, and a lot of people of our age um, saw an opportunity to go from where we started to other place, to a place that was much bigger and grander, if you will. And all it took was a lot of hard work, an investment of your own native intelligence, your energy, and your thought process of how you're going to get there, setting your goals. That's what he did, and I, I could see it in, in him every time we talked. I mean, I, I remember I was born without nothing. I start again without nothing. And I never got scared about that. All you can hope for in a life is that, that you, you live it, you hopefully treated people fairly well, as, as well as they treated you, and that in a way you've maybe left it a better place than when you got into it. The world is a bit better place because he lived. Because, because of, not just because he created this business which employed a lot of people and great, created great satisfaction among people who love to smoke cigars and that created this foundation which helped so many children. Just those things alone are reason enough that he had a life, successful life well lived. So all I would say to him is, may your shadow 
run along and may I walk in it? Uh, one of the things I will never forget about Carlos Atro Fuente was how dedicated he was to his family. He ran Atro Fuente Cigar Factory in Santiago, Dominican Republic, by commuting from his home in Tampa, Florida, until he passed away at 81 last year. He would spend one week at his factory in Santiago and the other in Tampa so that he could take care of his wife, who was not doing well health-wise. He would catch an early morning flight home from Santiago and arrive in Tampa late in the afternoon so that he could prepare dinner for his wife. Sometimes when things were busy at his factory, he would fly back on the following Monday. Watching him made you feel so humble and reassess what your priority in your life must be. He was a man of a few words, but truly led us with his example. If I had to have, was asked to have one word to describe Carlos, it would be authentic. He was a real, he was a real person. There wasn't one phony, untrue bone in his body. He was a real person. I want to say class, but I also would want to say compassionate. Um, so I don't know if there's just one word to say it, but maybe we can combine those two. You know, a man of class and a man of compassion. I would say he was, uh, he was like a rock. He, he was the foundation, he was the bedrock of his family and, uh, and, and his company and uh, the, the, the Cigar Family uh, Charitable Foundation. Cubano, Cuban. There's no words really to express it. I mean, it, it, it's something that I dream of I always prayed that someday that I would have in my own family the same thing that I had in my parents' family when we were growing up, and I think that it was accomplished, if not beyond.